Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another MLB free agency video. This is just like my trade rumors video, except for free agents. And we're going to be talking about three players today, who they are, where I think they will go, and then we can have a discussion about it down in the comments. What's a little bit different about this video is MLBTradeRumors.com, where I've gotten some of this information, some of these trade rumors before. They created a list of 50 players who are free agents. They need a place to go next year in 2023. And of those 50 players, 47 of them have deals. Only the three players that we're going to talk about today need a place to go next year. Two of them are pitchers. One of them is a position player. And then I guess Carlos Correa is in the picture too because he hasn't finalized the deal, but that's a different story. Anyway, the three players that we are talking about today are Jerks and Profar, Andrew Chafin, and Michael Waka. Again, of those 50 free agents that MLB Trade Rumors came up with, those three guys have not signed anywhere and we are almost in the new year. So let's talk about where they could go and we are going to start with Michael Waka. I believe he is probably the best of these players, uh, at least in terms of war, in terms of what he could bring to the table, where he's at in his career. And he had a great 2022 season. So we'll start with him. He had a 3.3 war in 2022, which is in fact like a third of his career war. <laughs> kind of crazy. He had a great year last year. Went 11-2, a 3.32 ERA, started 23 games, 127 innings. 104 strikeouts and a whip of 1.1. Of course, he was with Boston last year, and that's kind of an interesting deal because Boston, maybe you can agree with me, they don't really know what they're doing. Uh, they are in the bottom of the AL East. They've gotten rid of some players. They went out and got you know, one or two players, maybe the lower end of the free agency market. Who knows what they're really doing? I don't think they will be able to compete at all in the AL East, but... I don't think he stays, is what I'm trying to say. I don't think he will, will sign another deal with them, um, especially with the season that he had. Uh, Michael Waka is only a one-time All-Star. He has had some really good years, but he was with the Cardinals during a really, really good time. And again, not that his numbers are bad at all. His ERA kind of ranges from like three to five, kind of in there. Had a really bad year in 2020 and 2021, but has always kind of been a solid pitcher. And again, this year really kind of stepped up his game. I gave you his numbers. He's 31. Okay, that's kind of the kicker in this. And he's a right-handed pitcher. A lot of lefties have been, I think, of need lately and maybe have gone for higher deals. But Waka, with his numbers, I think could really be a beneficial player for a good team. And if you haven't noticed, I don't know if I titled this or not, but Honestly, I think the Padres could be in on all of these guys, so I don't know if the title will be Padres make moves or three free agents. I don't know. Regardless, I think that Michael Waka could make a fantastic home on the sunny San Diego beaches because San Diego is in a weird spot as well. They are actually a competitor, which is, you know, different from Boston. Uh, and I think if you take a look at the numbers from Waka and his history, he would make a great fit for what they are doing in San Diego, especially if what he did in Boston continues, right? So they have you Darvish. They have Joe Musgrove. They got Blake Snell. Right now, they have Nick Martinez and Adrian Morjon. So, like, that's a pretty solid rotation, I would say. I, maybe not as good as it was last year. I know they did a McKenzie Gore for a while, uh, then they traded him uh, for Soto. Then they did have... Clevenger, who I guess wasn't really involved in the picture as much, but you know, still kind of a bigger name. Those two guys are no longer there, so they they have some room if their cap space allows it. Gosh, I don't even know about that. But regardless, if they want to go get a guy, Waka might be a perfect fit for that. He could fit into that three or four spot pretty easily. You know, regarding where do you put Blake Snell? I think I think you probably keep Nick Martinez. Uh, maybe though he's a righty. I don't know exactly what you want to do with Morjon because he's a lefty. Like depending on what they actually want to do with with their lefty, I think they need another starting pitcher. Is what I'm trying to say. I guess maybe it doesn't really matter where he fits. I think they need somebody else, and I think Waka is probably the guy. Right? Uh, like I said, there's only three free agents left of that high caliber, probably. San Diego has not done a ton this offseason. They could go ahead and make a big move, I think, to at least help that rotation out 
the middle of that rotation, if nothing else. And again, if he has a breakout year, you know, put him at the one, put him at the two. I don't think he'll be better than Darvish or Musgrove, but you know what I'm saying. And if he doesn't have a great year, well, is he better than Martinez or Morjon? I don't know. That, I guess, is, is up for you guys to decide in the comments, too. But I think they could at least use another starting pitcher. And if nothing else, everything that I just say, they go with a six, a six-man rotation, or at least have a six guy available. Maybe they want to, you know, keep one of those guys as their sixth and, and go with a five-man rotation, use him in the bullpen, whatever, they can use Waka. He is a perfect fit for the San Diego Padres organization. He should sign there if they have the funds to do it. I don't really know any other place that he could go, to be honest. I mean, everybody needs pitching. You could maybe argue the Mets, uh, but they have a pretty solid rotation too. I think the Padres are number one in my book. I'll throw the Mets in there too just because they've made so many other pitching moves this season. They could probably use one more. I looked at their rotation earlier. It's like, I I mean, if Cookie is the same year that he did last year, he's going to be fine, but uh, Carlos Carrasco has been good. They obviously just signed um, Kodai, so like, he's good. Quintana, Verlander, Scherzer. That's a great rotation. But Padres could use some help, and if the Mets want him, I guess they could go ahead and try to get him too, but Michael Walker needs to go to a contending team, especially with the numbers he put up last year. Let's go to the next guy. The next guy is going to be Let's go to the next page. Uh, it is going to be Jerks and Profar. He was just with the Padres. And the Padres, um, I don't know if they necessarily need another bat. I guess if Tatis comes back next year, they probably won't. He was pretty good for them, to be honest, in 152 games. Uh, at a 243 batting average, that's pretty solid. But a 111 OPS plus, he had a 3.1 war. I mean, the dude was pretty good. And... He, I mean, he was an outfielder. I, I don't know where they're going to put Tatis. I guess that's probably the main thing you need to, to figure out first. But he's 29 years old. This dude, I'm surprised, has not been signed. And I think they could take him back. That's what I'm saying. Like, they don't need him. But I think it would be a great bench player. Or if they want to bench Tatis. Like, I don't know exactly what the situation is in San Diego with what they're trying to do this offseason. But with these two guys, I think there's... There is really good reason that he could go back to San Diego. Maybe they're just trying to figure out some numbers. I don't know. But he has progressively gotten better over the last two years. I guess COVID doesn't really, does that count? Then you even go back to 2019. He has gotten better every year. If he goes back to the Padres, maybe he starts, maybe he's a switch hitter. Like Maybe he is a guy who fills in everywhere. But that's kind of what you need, right? You need somebody like that. And I don't see why they wouldn't sign him back. Again, maybe the, the let's be honest, I don't know what the, cal the salary space is going on in San Diego with the whole last year of Soto and everything. But they haven't really made a bunch of moves. Why not? If they want to go ahead and get Profar, they should. And if not, gosh, I could think of 100 teams that could probably take him. I mean, you look at, obviously, contenders, maybe the Mets, maybe the White Sox, maybe, I guess, the Astros kind of could use another player. Same kind of situation. The Mariners are probably in the same situation. They could just, he's a guy who could add to any roster and probably be effective. I'm surprised he hasn't been signed yet. But, again, for the sake of this video, I'll say he goes back to the Padres because, they could use him. They used him last year. It doesn't make sense why he's still a free agent. And I hope they uh, they sign him back. Lastly, we are going to talk about Andrew Chafin. And this is the worst of the three, to be honest. I mean, like, he did not have a great 2022. I would say it wasn't bad, though. Like, he only had .3 war. Not that that is the metric you need to measure everybody by. But he went 2-3 and three with a 2-8 ERA, 64 games in the bullpen, and 3 saves. He has kind of pitched all over. And he's really never been great. Especially in the last couple of years, he's been that guy to just kind of journey around. And I don't see him going to a team and staying there for much of the year. Probably till the trade deadline, I would guess. And I'm going to say, well, I, I kind of already spoiled it. He could go to the Padres. Again, like, I don't think the Padres will sign this guy just because they have a ton of lefties in their bullpen. They have Castillo. They have Tim Hill. They have Pomerantz. 
They have Josh Hader, of course. They can't be filling up their entire roster with lefties. So he, I would say that he's probably out there. But Detroit, they are kind of on the up-and-coming. They didn't have a great year last year, but he could go back there. Uh, again, if you want to look at the Mets, I think the Mets are another team that could probably use another left-handed pitcher. All of their lefties, they only have three of them, are no names. I'm sorry if you're a Mets fan. I don't know any of them. Um, so you're talking about a contending team. They probably give a chance to him. And, you know, if he, if he doesn't work out there or if he stays with Detroit uh, and signs another deal with them, he would probably go somewhere at the trade deadline. Um, otherwise, you know, hey, the Pirates have been making moves. Why don't they take a chance on Chafin, you know? So there's a lot of different possibilities that I think they could go with. He's a, he's a pretty good left-handed pitcher. That's what they need to focus on. A team needs to buy into that. And I think he could go to a contending team. Maybe not be the best somewhere, but again, somewhere that needs a left-hander and they can compete, take a chance on him. Could be the Padres, could be the Mets. I don't know. Love to know what your thoughts are down in the comments. But that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys do enjoy this video. Leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.